I told you. I told you. If I could just help one player or one person. I'm inspired a lot by, by Kevin. So, uh, yeah, it was really nice uh, tournament. You just accidentally made up a great tennis term. Wow! <laughs> Holy smokes! That's unbelievable. Welcome to Tennis United. Vashik, what do we have on tap for the show today? Well, we have a mixed bag this week. We're kicking off the show with Osaka and Tsitsipas, followed by a very interesting conversation with Robin Soderling, who was the first man to beat Nadal at Roland Garros. Absolutely love that Soderling chat. And we'll be ending the show with a little social roundup and a chat with Africa's biggest talent, Kevin Anderson, and owns your board. Yes, we will. So let's get it started. Let's do it. Vashik, today we have two amazing players joining us. Steph, Naomi, thanks for coming on. We have some archive tweets from both of you over the years. We're gonna show them right now and try and guess which one of you posted them. All right, first tweet is, quarantine is making me overthink so many things that never even crossed my mind before. I'm thinking this is Naomi. I don't, I'm, I haven't seen this tweet. I think it's Naomi, but. Why? What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I feel like this is something that you would say. Is the grammar too basic to be <laughs> Stephanos? Is that it? Tell, I mean, what, what's one thing that has crossed your mind that has never crossed your mind before? I'm actually genuinely interested. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, every couple of months, I think about like what my purpose in life is and stuff. So I was probably thinking about that, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's deep. Sorry, I haven't been active recently. I've been real busy doing nothing. Oh, this is, I, that, I know this one. Is it mine? <laughs> I would never write real busy. I would, if I would write that, I would say really busy, not real busy. Is that mine? <laughs> so, so then the, if that's true, then that are you trying to say that's not yours? Because I was going to guess that that's I yours. I actually think that's yours. I don't remember myself writing something like this. But that's Whatever. not mine. That's not mine 100%. I guarantee that. I'm still right. going to guess with right. Stefanos. Right. I'm still going to go with Stefanos. Naomi, gonna go this Stephanos. is yours? Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I told you. I told you. My new hobby is sending funny videos to random people on my flight through airdrop. Yeah, that's, that's Stephanos. That's gotta be Steph. That's me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's you for sure. That, that is really epic, have, actually. I have some funny videos uh, stored on my phone and I just send them to, um, to random people. It can be either a video or a, or a meme. I had few people accept and most of, I mean, the majority have declines, so that's yeah, pretty normal. Yeah, they're probably thinking it's like a virus or something. I'm freaks and pictures. I need a six month vacation twice a year. I feel like this, ooh, let me think about this one. It's Naomi, 100%. Okay, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say. You say Naomi? I think it's, I think it's, I think it's Steph. I'm gonna say Naomi. Um, I, I don't think it's me. Oh, Steph, come Steph's on, Yeah, I don't know, guys. Hair dye and scissors are looking real attractive. Are and honestly, this is Naomi. First of all, Naomi, we're sure. talking about 100%. Yes, yeah, hair dye and scissors. Why? And the, and the RN. And the RN. I mean, Stephanos is not is not the kind of guy that's going to be dyeing his hair. At least I don't think no. so. Am I right? Ever? Na Naomi, do you trust anyone that you were quarantining with to cut your hair, like at home? Would you trust anyone? No, but I actually cut my hair already by myself. You cut your own hair? Yeah, but it doesn't look different because it's curly, so it's whatever. We're all pretty bizarre. Some of us are just better at hiding it. That's all. I'm going to go with Steph because of the commas. <laughs> I'm learning something. Way too many of them. Way too many. Yeah, it's like smart. I think a, a poem or something. I have to write like proper, like grammarly. Like I have to. I, I feel bad if I don't. Are band aids a fashion statement? Question mark. Definitely Naomi. I'm going to say Naomi for sure. Don't think so. I don't know. I, I don't. Maybe think this is a really me. old tweet. I I think it's me. <laughs> oh no. What? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. No. Are they a fashion not. statement? I need to know. No, they're not. Asking uh, for a that's friend. That's what I was asking. I wanted to know from the people. Is it a fashion statement or not? They are in Japan. 
just people have them in different colors and with characters so they put them on their cheek and whatever and it's cute is that the next on court look we can see from you naomi um i don't think it'll stick to my cheek but <laughs> <laughs> maybe if it becomes that popular thanks guys and really look forward to seeing you too soon bye bye, -bye. All right, guys, we are joined here by a very special guest, Robin Soderling. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Nice to see you guys. Thanks for coming on and chatting with us a little bit. Emotional health is a big topic, and I feel like there is a lot of conversation around it, but sometimes not always around professional athletes. So tell me a little bit about uh, this last emotional post, sharing your story, and kind of what made this time seem right to talk about it. There's a famous radio show in Sweden where you speak for 90 minutes about whatever you want. And I've been asked, I think, the last four or five years to do it, uh, but I didn't feel ready. So this year I did it. And then I realized, you know, so many people in, uh, in Sweden heard it. But then I realized, OK, but the only Swedish people understand. So I just wanted to, uh, to put it out myself on my own uh, social media. I just wanted to tell it in my, in my own words. You know, the only reason why I decided to speak about it is, is because I hope that I could, if I could just help one player or one person, it's, uh, it's enough for me. It's good enough. So Robin, did you struggle with uh, anxiety and mental issues throughout your career? I mean, the thing, it, it feels like it just happened overnight, you know, from one day to another, I was a completely different person, but it happened after I won the tournament uh, in Bostad 2011 in July. And I remember going back home and I, I remember realizing, okay, I'm not going to play until whatever it was, Toronto or Montreal. And that was a few weeks away. And I felt just like, okay, finally I can relax a little bit. And it all just came up. And then since then it was just there, you know, it was, it was a terrible time for, for many, many years. And especially in the beginning, because I never experienced anything like that before. And I was just, I didn't have, any idea what was happening to me i feel like as an athlete we are all expected to show no weakness and to to fight through things and what would you recommend to other athletes that sort of deal with the same pressure i think it's really difficult to have someone to speak to you know of course i had a, a mental coach uh, who trained me but i was always being, speaking about or i was always working about performing you know how to perform even more i just needed someone to speak to about you know other things you know how i felt to become a professional player or professional athlete you know the sport needs to be a big part of your life but the danger is is when it becomes your whole life choosing to have an apple i was thinking is this good or bad for my tennis you know should i go to the cinema today no maybe not i need to sleep nine hours not eight uh, and that was the case for me you know it was my basically my whole life basically everything i cared about this was tennis so robin do you think that stress and anxiety is just like a byproduct of individual sport no i think you know if you want to become a professional athlete any sport not just tennis you know you have to train extremely hard you have to be really focused but as you said you need to find that balance because i think that's just a certain amount of stress and training that the body can actually absorb. I see coaches uh, for for younger person. They you know they really they really applaud this kind of behavior. You know they always say the harder you train the better it is, and they always say like oh he's so focused. And if they want to take a rest day or they they think about other stuff, you know the the coaches would often say oh it's not serious enough, which is which is a shame. Since we've kind of touched upon on how mental of a sport tennis is and realizing we focus so much on the technical, how have you changed your coaching ways now that you know this and, and apply it to the juniors that you're teaching? Yeah, I really, I really try to see and try to speak to the players about how they feel. You know, it's not easy because sometimes I feel like it's really difficult for someone that hasn't experiencing it to really understand what I'm, what I'm speaking about, especially when they're older. Um, so it's not easy, but I think a, a good thing is that if someone says something, someone is um, mentioning something, you know, it's easier for me to relate. And when you feel that someone can relate, at least that was the case for me, it, it's so much easier when you really feel that someone understands. Robin, thanks for sharing your story. You know, I think it's 
you know, it's a big deal in the sports world, in elite athletes, but especially in tennis. Unfortunately, it's a big problem. I and mean, not only in sport, uh, sports, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a problem these days in today's society. And no matter if you're doing sport or, or, or work with some, something else. So it's something that needs to be uh, spoken about a lot more, I think. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you guys. It is time for the social roundup. All right, let's get rolling. Jamie, oh, partner. This, listen, I, I think Jamie has been the most consistent player working out this whole COVID season. I think he posted a workout every single day. I'm glad he has his shirt off because he needs some sun. That's a hundred percent needs some sun. Players have been stepping up their games and the intensity is rising. We got Sakari here crushing forehands, cross courts on the clay. She's always crushing shots. We got Stan also. Oh, of course, you got to do a backhand. Oh, look at that slow mo. They got to do the backhand. Just, there just happened lunge. to be a camera there. There just happened to be Ridiculous. a camera right there. Look at that. This guy. Full extension <laughs> down the line. Uh, Grigor uh, trying to get to another level, um, upping his production value here. I mean, if he's upping his foot speed as well, I think you guys are in he's... trouble because he's already pretty quick out there. Pavlyuchenkova, she's doing tweeners. Winners, holy smokes. Oh then... yes, there we go. That was a pretty clean twinner. A twinner. That was Actually, a we could call twinner. it a yeah. twinner. You just accidentally made up a great tennis term. Wow. <laughs> holy smokes. Did I just come up with That's something? That's unbelievable. That was a twinner. A twinner. Look at Di Diego's got his knee high socks on. Look at this. I love Diego. I like He's the it. best. Look at that little jumping backhand, a little dance. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Not expecting so much, so much uh, hips. On little that, salsa, right merengue, there, little... something like that. <laughs> Simona working oh, out on hopping. fitness, footwork. What? She is hopping. Nobody's surprised here. It's like a, it's like a kangaroo. Look right. at her. How quick is She's Simona? She's got great footwork. Amazing oh, no. footwork. She hit the. She hit, no, no, she hit the, no, no, she hit the But thing. she keeps going, over. which is the spirit of But she keeps going Simona. because she's a fighter. She's a fighter. Okay, that was a slide. Happened. Get this, wait for it, twinner. That was a slide twinner. That's a pretty sick so, shot. Like, this is actually super impressive. What they won't say is they started at 8 a.m. and it's currently dark. <laughs> <laughs> super cash. Baby. Oh my goodness. Is the baby What are you doing, baby feeding? Balls? <laughs> this is good. I actually think that's a pretty good workout because you really don't know where no, he's gonna throw it. Distracted. Look at that. He was looking though. He did a little like head fake there. He was looking to the right and threw the ball. And yeah, he, yeah, he faked him out. He's like, oh, I'm looking back. Nope, I'm throwing the ball. I mean, he's been doing this for a while. I mean, this must be quite the traffic jam. <laughs> This, this has been be, a very uh, this is, long this is like traffic his... jam. You know, you know how it is when you sit in traffic too long, your hip flexors get tight. Like you this gotta get out like and work his... the legs a little bit. I know, I know. It's like his eight. I appreciate set. this. Okay, Bethany. Post of the week. I like the baby feeding. That was a good one. The little head fake at the end. I'll have to give it that one. I'll have to say baby feeding. That w the, I thought that would be your favorite one. This there was no dog in our in our videos today, and the baby just took it over. <laughs> so the baby wins. Baby wins. I'm not gonna lie, that trick, the fan trick shot uh, was That's pretty cool. impressive. Also, because I get to say the new term that I coined, a twinner. It's a great twinner. It's a great twinner. All right, everyone, we're joined here by two of the most accomplished players from Africa, Ons Jabour and Kevin Anderson. How are you guys doing and where are you? Yeah, everything's going well. We're actually just on our way to our daughter's nine month doctor's visit. So I am in the car. I hope the signal's going to be okay. And Owens, tell, tell us a little bit about Tunisia. I, it's a place that's still on my bucket list. I promise I'm going to come visit you. But uh, tell me what we'd be doing while we were there. Well, I don't have a baby yet, but uh, <laughs> and yeah, I'm trying to do all the crazy stuff. I'm uh, actually fishing. 
but I suck really at it. <laughs> so I think I'm quitting soon. <laughs> I think the longest one was like this. <laughs> You're the highest ranked Arab in WTA history. When do you think you realized you had pro potential? At what point were you thinking like, hey, maybe I could give this a shot on the circuit? I think maybe when I won the French Open in uh, in 2011, like it was a kind of a big deal in Tunisia. <laughs> it's a big deal, period. No, it's not a big deal in, for example, in America or Canada, or <laughs> but in, in Tunisia, it was a big deal. Like you know, everybody came to the airport. It's like, I won a real grand slam. Kevin, you actually reached the final of Wimbledon in 2018, which was the first time in 33 years uh, since the South African reached the final of Wimbledon. What, uh, what was that feeling like? And also what was the reception like? You know, as the week and the days progressed, I mean, the amount of support I had was, you know, was really overwhelming. I mean, I think it was, uh, a really big deal back home. I know the the morning of the of the finals, um, I had a quick talk with the president, um, President Ramaphosa, which was a pretty uh, cool experience. But yeah, it's crazy. I mean, just looking back, my cousin was sending me some photos. Uh, you know, my whole family pretty much came over, and he was sending some photos. And I can't believe it's already you know two years ago now. And Owens, what about you? A little bit. You had a great start of the year. We have to talk a little bit about your Australian Open because you played. Caroline Wozniacki, who that was her last match. I think we all knew she was retiring. Tell me a little bit about that match. Yeah, I know that Caroline was stopping, and uh, and I actually I, I tried not to think about it because it's kind of it's kind of tough to know that you're gonna end someone's career. But then at the same time, uh, I wanted to continue like the good the, the adventure there at the Australian Open. I was feeling very well. I was playing very good. Um, inspired a lot by by Kevin so uh, yeah it was really nice uh, tournament and hopefully I can I can do better next time so Anz you mentioned that that Kevin was uh, one of as an inspiration for you so I'm gonna ask you Kevin who was your kind of role model or inspiration when you were uh, coming up and growing up in, in South Africa it was like Wayne Ferreira who was top 10 for quite a while we had Amanda Kutzer I think that was fortunate at the time but it'll definitely be very meaningful if uh you know, in 10 years time, somebody has a conversation and says, you know, one of the reasons they played was because, you know, they watched us uh, when they were kids. There is a lot of players who start playing more tennis, like uh, they they got interested, um, even if they didn't know the sport, they wanted to know what what happened, why we have a Tunisian who won the Grand Slam. And then, of course, that started a little bit by improving my ranking. Everybody uh, started following me more. You could inspire a lot of uh, young generations. Um, I mean, for me, it really is that's the goal. Um, I want to see more players. I want to see more female play players in the WTA or also um, like male players on, on the ATP, like to compete and uh, give the example. Well, guys, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. Kevin, we're going to let you take care of your, your daughter and get the uh, doctor's appointment. Yeah, thanks, guys. And just quickly, it's been, a, I must say, it's been really great seeing the show. I've, I've really enjoyed watching it. You guys are doing a great job. I know it's a tough time, but uh, I think this show is going great. So keep up the good work. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, guys. Thanks again. Okay. Thank See you. you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right, Bethany, that's another show in the books. What was your highlight this week? I, I got to be honest, I'm kind of liking this banter between Sissipas and Osaka. Yeah, they have they have some pretty good rapport there. They have, they've been uh, teasing each other a little bit over the years with tweets. And then for me, the highlight was Soderling. I thought it was really cool to hear, uh, you know, about his struggles and opening up about, you know, Brittany essentially kind of disappeared for a while there. And, and there were some question marks. And it was just really cool to hear from him again. I haven't seen him in a long time. So that was the highlight for sure for me. Yeah, no, we all we all haven't seen him for a while. So I think it was great that he was able to open up and sort of tell his story. I think he's going to help a lot of people, a lot of athletes and a lot of tennis players. All right. Thanks for another fun show, Vasek, as always. And fans, we will see you next week for another episode of Tennis United. See you guys.